Welcome back to our YouTube channel at Rocky Knob Farm. Today we took a field trip and we're at JLR Farm with Jessica Willis here and we're going to learn a little bit about horses today. So we have a few horses out for you today to show you the different types of riding and the different types um, of horses that we have. So this is just what we offer at this farm. That doesn't mean that this covers all that horses have to offer because there's a whole lot more. We can start with this little cute feller right here. This is Tonka. Tonka is a miniature horse um, and it is a muddy time of the year. So they're all a little bit, a little bit muddy and definitely wooly. This is Tonka. Tonka is 33 inches tall and uh, people aren't sure what you can do with miniature horses, but um, little kids can ride them, though many miniature horses are not a fan of being ridden. <laughs> um, Tonka is as a uh, pretty good bucker as he is driver, so he's bucked several little ones off. It was my own, so no worries there, and he was fine, um, but we learned very quickly that that wasn't something that he was gonna prefer. Um, but what he does prefer is to be hooked up to our cart here, this cart can hook up to them and he can pull two or three kids and he loves to do so. Um, so anything that you could do riding, you could also do driving. Um, when you're driving in the cart, you're holding the reins and directing the horse and telling them where to go. You can run barrels, you can do endurance rides, you can do um, shows in hand, which means that you would just be leading the horse. Um, and you can also do jumping classes in hand, so you would lead the horse and send them over the jumps. Um, so they have a lot to offer, and also the coolest thing, did you know that they are um, using miniature horses as seeing eye animals? No, I didn't. So an, an interesting fact is that um, horses can live to be 30 years old, maybe even 40 or 50, that is, um, that's rare. In 30s is pretty average, pretty normal, um, but it takes just as much time and money to train a horse to be a seeing guide animal as it does a dog. And it lasts a lot longer. But you get probably three times the length out of a horse as you do a dog. Um, so I think that's pretty stellar. Um, and this guy is part of the family. He's been here ever since my son was born. He was a gift to my son from my in-laws when my son was born. Um, so he is 12, I think. Um, 12 or 13, somewhere in that range. Um, and we're pretty fond of the little feller. He thinks that he's the boss of all the big horses. <laughs> he's a very big personality. So we'll move over here to Elle. Um, Elle is a trainer, um, and she is, she's like a German thoroughbred. So you have your thoroughbreds here in the States that, um, that race or do jumping, things like that. She is, um, their breed originated in Germany. Um, so she's kind of like a, a version of a thoroughbred. Um, they typically do English. Um, and that is what she is saddled in today. She's saddled in an English saddle. Um, you have your stirrups, which is what you put your feet in. You're gonna sit in the seat here, and then you don't have any horn to hang on to. There's no horn on the saddle. It's a pretty simple saddle. Um, there's not much to it. And so this style of riding is for jumping or um, flat work, flat work meaning not jumping, but you might, um, you might go on a fox hunt, which would also include jumps. So a lot of English stems from jumping, but it doesn't always have to be jumping. Um, an English horse is gonna be a more forward moving horse, a horse that covers a lot more ground. Um, and you're gonna be posting, so you're gonna rise and fall with their trot. So really this is more of an experienced rider type saddle. Very much so. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I'd stick with the horn. So, and then we have the uh, Western discipline over here. This is Vegas. Vegas is a three-year-old. She is a quarter horse. Um, her coloring is pretty cool. Um, she is a strawberry roan. So all these white hairs mixed in with the reddish color, um, that is a strawberry roan. And her mane is pretty cool. I think if she were a human, somebody would just be itching to have um, all these highlights and lowlights in this mane. So she's a pretty cool, cool color. Very pretty. Um, we call it chrome on horses, which right now her chrome is covered up with mud. But as you can see, she's got white legs up to her, these are hocks right here. Um, so she's got white legs up to her hocks and up to her knees. So horses have two, I, I hesitate to say that because they really have four knees, um, but they have two knees right here. And then they also have a joint right here that acts as a knee. 
And here, these are not knees, but these are hocks. And her hocks move like our elbows. So if I pick up her, her leg, do you see how her hock bends? Mm -hmm. And so it's different from her knee up front. So her knee up here, good girl, thank you, good girl. So her knee bends forward just like our knees, but mm -hmm. then in the back, it's a hock that acts as our elbow that works the same. And so that's where the spring comes from. That's where the bounce comes from when they're trotting is those, those hocks are really springy. And so that's what gives you the bounce. If you were in an English saddle, you would post with that bounce of the springy hocks, right? right. This is a Western saddle. You have your stirrups, same as you do for English. These are the fenders. The English saddle doesn't have fenders. You see a lot more decoration, the tooling on the saddle. The saddle is much bigger. You also have a horn. That's what I like, you can hang on. Right? <laughs> so if you get into trouble, you can grab that horn right there. Um, you can also tuck your fingers behind the back of that saddle. This is a cantle, and that makes a nice handheld grip there too, so you can stay sitting back. Um, I tell people that when they, when they ride, they need to tuck their pockets on their pants. They tuck their bottom, sit back, and have your shoulders over top of your, over top of your sitting bones. So that if I pull their hand and I pull on them, do you see how rooted he is? Do you see how his weight goes into his heels? Yeah. So if they, if they aren't on their heels, that'd be like standing on their toes. If he's standing on his toes, going, do you see how I can pull him off balance? Right. So when I tell people to, to get in their seat and get their seat belt on, that means they're gonna be sitting on their pockets and their shoulders are gonna go down, putting the weight over their sitting bones, which is the most balanced position. So if they can grab the back of the saddle, if they get unsteady, that seats them on their sitting bones and what I call having their seat belt on. So um, another fun fact about the Western saddle, a lot of people start out Western because as you see, it has a lot of leather and all that leather is gonna go over the, the sides of the horse, giving you much more balance and stability. So the English saddle, do you see how it just perches right there on the top of the horse's back? If you get off balance, it would be very easy to pull that saddle over because there's nothing else on the sides catching that saddle to going over. Right. So another fun uh, fact about Western saddles, Western saddles are, are there for a purpose. So all the stability that goes over the back of the horse, if you're cutting cows, you know, you need to get a cow out of the herd, that horse has to get down and athletic and move side to side, right? Well, the saddle is gonna give you a lot of stability with that leather overreaching right. over the sides of that horse so it doesn't slip or fall when they're doing those cutting cow maneuvers. Um, very athletic. So they're both athletic animals, just in a different field. And as you see, she's not very tall, and Elle's a lot taller than she is. So they're built for, Elle would be much more suited for jumping or covering a lot of ground. She's gonna be like your little sports car that can handle curves and corners really fast, because she's low to the ground and can handle those maneuvers. Elle would probably trip over her own feet <laughs> if she were trying to go over those maneuvers because she's built too long and lanky and stretched out. So she's kind of more your, your compact uh, sports car. <laughs> so, so let's talk about upkeep. I, when you had the hoof in your hand a while ago, how often do you have to trim hooves? We trim hooves every four weeks here. Um, we have a, um, most of the horses on this farm, there's 15 here, are barefoot. And with a barefoot trim, um, you, here, if this were the hoof, you would trim that so that the there's a roll, kind of a bevel at the edge of their hoof. And so what what allows the what that allows the hoof to do is break over easily. If their toes get long and stretched out, so let's say they go eight weeks between a trim, then their toes are kind of splaying out like this, and it's gonna pull along those tendons and ligaments and change the angles on their feet. So really, there's a lot of geometry in horses too. Um, that's the teacher coming out in me. Um, but if you let their, their feet get out of, out of balance, you're changing those angles, which affects the entire, the entire uh, structure of the horse. Elle has shoes on. Um, as I said, we're in the middle, well, probably the beginning of mud season here. Elle has had an injury to her hoof. So just like people, <laughs> see you're stretching up big. Um, just like people, their hooves grow from right here. This is called the cornet band. And I don't know if you can see this big bulge right here. It's yeah, kind of it. covered in mud, but there's a, a big bulge right here. And this is all scar tissue. She, um, she found a buried fence line of barbed wire and she hooked her foot, her hoof right over it or under it. And so that barbed wire made a little rainbow 
loop over the top of her hoof mm -hmm. and she ripped it mm -hmm. and pulled her hoof off and the top of her cornet band. Um, the Vex in Lexington gave her a 50% chance of just being pasture sound, meaning she could hang out in the pasture and be okay, but not riding sound. So fast forward to five years, um, we've done lots of trimming, lots of um, other modalities, therapies to help her. Um, we've done red light therapy. Um, we've seen uh, chiropractors and body workers and um, different veterinarians to help her. And so she's needed a little bit more support than what um, her yes. natural foot has. So we have put shoes on her, which I haven't picked their feet yet, and this is what they look like when you haven't picked their feet. But she has a nice, good, wide foot. She has a lot, um, a lot of hoof there to work with and offer some stability. So Elle is actually riding sound now. So now we're in the feed room, and uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what, what do you feed your horses? So I have recently started a new venture. Uh, my horses used to eat grain, um, and the grain was a really high, high-end, um, non-processed feed. It had oats in it, it had alfalfa pellets, um, but I still had some horses with some issues. One horse would get tender feet when she went out on the pasture, um, and so I'd have to keep her off the grass just because she was sensitive there. Well now, since I've changed her feed, we keep all of our feed in the freezer, and this is, this is the base of their feed, which are alfalfa pellets. And this is what they look like. Kind of like what rabbits eat, but unlike rabbits, you don't want them to be hard. Um, these little pellets will blow up probably 10 times their size when they're rehydrated. So what we do is the buckets are here on the wall. These buckets here on the wall are labeled with all of the horse's names. Now we've had a couple of additions um, and their buckets aren't up here yet, but each of these buckets are for the horse that's name is on them. And we've got an extra, so we've got another bucket over here. Um, there's 15 horses here all together. So what we do is we'll take a um, scoop of the alfalfa pellets and put it in their buckets. So. McKinley and Sassy are both older. Sassy's 20 years old. She's still giving riding lessons. She's still going strong. Um, she's got lots of life left in her. Uh, she still lives up to her name, Sassy. <laughs> um, so her and McKinley both eat a little bit more um, alfalfa pellets. And then after we soak their feed, so their feed soaks in the summer, it might take 15 minutes to soak. In the winter when it's cold, um, it takes those compressed pellets a little bit longer to, to blow up and, and get to their full size. So I soak them anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour before I feed. So after their feed soaks and all the pellets blow up and get as big as they are gonna be, I don't know if you can see in that bucket, but when that feed is, is fully soaked, it's gonna come up almost to the top of that bucket, right to about here. So you can see the volume of, that, of that, those alfalfa pellets gets to be quite big after they're soaked. And then after they're soaked, we're gonna put in whatever supplements they get. So these are all the supplements for each of the different horses. So as you can see, Sassy and McKinley, they get quite a bit more than our easy keeper of Blackie. Wow. So those are the different things, the different supplements that they're on. So this ain't like the, the old traditional way of just throwing some sweet feed in the stall and throwing some hay in. Right. So they have access to hay 100% um, of the time. Um, and this is something that I'm helping clients with if they have issues with their horses, say their horses um, have sweet itch, it's like a um, dermatitis or um, maybe even eczema that people yeah. get. You know, they get um, really dry, scratchy patches of skin. They lose their hair in those places. It's a real big problem for horses during the summer. Um, Blackie used to have sweet itch. And since I've changed and kind of revamped his feed with the help of a equine um, nutritional therapy practitioner, they were able to walk me through what and why we're going to change um, of their feed. So they're off of all grains, all processed feeds. Um, and So basically it's just like humans, you know, the healthier you eat, the less problems you may have. Yeah. And Olivia is the one that I was telling you had gotten tender when she was on grass. A lot of people don't think of grass as having sugars, but mm -hmm. the grass has um, a high sugar content at different points in the year. And the, um, the frost on the grass can be the worst time for um, for horses in the in the sugar content of the grass. So taking the grain away from Olivia, that's like 
that would be equated to somebody with diabetes is taking the sugar out of their diet and helping them manage the sugar levels throughout the day more naturally. So that um, those grains, we don't think of those as being sugary, but that breaks down into sugar. And so I took away all the sugar out of their diet. Right. So my horses don't get any, some people feed peppermints and um, like processed candies or um, processed treats. My horses get carrots, apples, or like a non, um, a non GMO, not mm -hmm. genetically modified treat that they have. Um, so that, that's all they're allowed to eat. Um, my heart horse, my thoroughbred that I had in high school and growing up, um, he was a cribber. It's where they hook their teeth on the wood and they pull back and they suck in air and it releases endorphins that's kind of like smoking. Well, he lost all of his top teeth. And I know that um, most of it was due to cribbing, but also the sugar that you know people would feed, um, they can't brush their teeth. I didn't brush his teeth. I don't know of many people that do. <laughs> and so now I'm like, no, no sugar, no processed seeds. I want them to, to be able to work and live as long as possible. So. Pretty cool. So as one of the conservation supervisors for Wayne County, I have to appreciate they're using some conservation practices. Uh, they did this on their own. They've come in here and they poured concrete to keep the horses from wading the mud. If you look around here, they're not finished yet, but their goal is to have more concrete here so that they can keep a good clean area and keep horses out of this deep mud. So tell me, tell me a little bit about your, uh, your lessons. What, what do you offer here for so kids? We have, we have um, services that will fit anybody's need. You can haul your horse in um, and we can work in the dry in the arena. Um, you can use our horses. So we offer lessons for anyone. If you have your own horses if you don't have your own horses we can offer riding lessons to kids we do kids camps that are really fun we do um, apple bobbing where they run down and the horses actually get the apple out of the water bucket um, they love that it's a hoot and it's fun to watch the kids try to drag the horses now if the horses already know what's going on they'll bust a move <laughs> but the new ones are like really why are we gonna run so um, the kids have a blast at the kids camps we usually offer two camps a week during um, seasonable weather um, for the colder weather, we, we're cutting down on our camps right now, but we do offer private lessons. We can offer lessons to kids as young as, I don't know, my youngest has been three. Wow. Um, and it just depends on the kid and how engaged they are and how much attention span they have for it. But sometimes this is, this is their sport, you know? Not every kid fits into the music box or right. the football realm or basketball or ballet. Um, sometimes they just really connect with those animals. And so we offer riding lessons um, for people that don't have the, the ability to be around horses. Um, I've given tours to homeschooling groups. Um, That's awesome. We've done, we've done whatever people want. If they contact me, I will try to make it happen. Um, I try not to ever turn somebody away. If they want to be involved with horses, they can volunteer. They can help clean stalls. Um, as you see, we have lots of waste. Horses produce 55 pounds a day of poo just per horse. Wow. Um, so, and that's why the concrete was was pretty important is to get them up out of the mud oh, and yeah. be able to clean that off and not be taking away the dirt and everything with it. Um, I also offer training. You know, if a horse needs help, um, if they're afraid or if they buck or if it's a young horse um, or if you know the owner doesn't know what's going on, I can help problem solve and work that through. I also go to people's farms and help them. Um, get their feeding system down, um, reduce waste, um, do some pasture management. Um, the feed system is new for me this year. We've been doing that a full year so far. I think we started that in January of 2020. Um, something that we've been doing for a while, my husband built these awesome feeders, which are great. Um, and we put the hay nets in there. These are hay chicks hay nets, and it keeps them from pulling out so much hay and then pooping on it and standing right, right. in it. Um, and that just holds in the moisture. And so um, I'll go to people's farms and say, you know what, this would be a really good place to house your horses, or let's put your barn at the top of the hill so that it can drain. Um, I've also started a track system. So just like um, people that don't move enough, horses are designed to move and be um, nibbling. You know, They're not meant to get huge meals once or twice a day. So the track system is designed so that they have you know, bits of hay feeding stations throughout the track. Um, I've got a track on the outside of my arena, 
And so for horses that need that movement, we can put them out on the track and it makes a full circle around. Or if we block off the side of the arena, it makes a U, so they have to come back the other way to get back to the barn. So it increases their movement. So those are some services that I offer too, is that I'll, I'll make house calls, so to speak, yeah. um, and just offer what, um, what experiences I have to help them be more efficient in their horse keeping um, and get their horses nice and healthy. So if a kid's interested in taking a lesson, they can call you and look you up on yeah. Facebook, yeah. Uh, JLR Farm. Yeah. I'll put the link on the video. Uh, I appreciate you having us here today, and I, I'm really impressed with Girls Operation. Thanks. Thanks for coming.